What's up YouTube, it's Mullen here and I'm here with another video for you guys today. This time, I've got chapter 14 of the Red Pyramid in my hand. And we're about to start reading chapter 14 of the Red Pyramid. I know. Anyways, so... Chapter 14, a French guy almost killed us. The last couple of days, I'd seen a lot of crazy things. But the Hall of Ages took the prize. Double rows of stone pillars held up a ceiling so high you could have parked a blimp under it with no trouble. A shimmering blue carpet that looked like water ran down the center of the hall, which was so long I couldn't see the end even though it was brightly lit. Balls of fire floated around the helium floated around like helium basketballs, changing color whenever they bumped into one another. Millions of tiny hieroglyphic symbols also drifted throughout the air, randomly combining into words and then breaking apart. I grabbed a pair of glowing red legs. They walked across my palm before jumping off and dissolving. The weirdest things were the were the displays. Pause for a second. Um, the narrator here is Carter, not his sister. I don't know what else to call them. Between the columns on either side of us, images shifted, coming into focus and then blurring out again like holograms in a sandstorm. Come on, Zaya told us, and don't spend too much time looking. It was impossible not to. The first 20 feet or so, the magical scenes cast a golden light across the hall. A blazing sun rose above an ocean. A mountain emerged from the water, and I had the feeling I was watching the beginning of the world. Giants strode across the Nile Valley, a man with black skin and the head of a jackal, a lioness with bloody fangs, and a beautiful woman with, with wings of light. Sadie stepped off the rug. In a trance, she reached toward the images. Stay on the carpet! Zaya grabbed Sadie's hand and pulled her back toward the center of the hall. You are seeing the age of the gods. No mortal should dwell on these images. But, Sadie blinked. They're only pictures, aren't they? Memories, Zaya said. So powerful they could destroy your mind. Oh, Sadie said in a small voice. We kept walking. The images changed to silver. I saw armies clashing. Egyptians and kilts and sandals and leather armor fighting with spears. A tall, dark-skinned man in red and white armor placed a double crown on his head. Narmer, the king who united Upper and Lower Egypt. Sadie was right. He did look a bit like Dad. This is the Old Kingdom, I guessed. The first great age of Egypt. Zaya nodded. As we walked down the hall, we saw workers building the first step pyramid out of stone. Another few steps and the biggest pyramid of all rose from the desert of at Geza. Its outer layer of smooth white casing stones gleamed in the sun. Ten thousand workers gathered at its base and knelt before the pharaoh, who raised his hand to the sun, dedicating his own tomb. Kafu, I said. The baboon? Sadie asked, suddenly interested. No, the pharaoh who built the Great Pyramid, I said. It was the tallest structure in the world for almost four thousand years. Another few steps and the images turned from silver to coppery. The Middle Kingdom, Zaya announced, a bloody chaotic time, and yet this is when the House of Life came to maturity. The scenes shifted more rapidly. We watched armies fighting, temples being built, ships sailing on the Nile, and, mag and magicians throwing fire. Every step covered hundreds of years, and yet the hall still went on forever. For the first time, I, ju I understood just how ancient Egypt was. We crossed another threshold, and the light turned to bronze. <clears throat> the new kingdom, I guessed. The last, time, the last time Egypt was ruled by Egyptians. Zaya said nothing, but I watched, scenes pass, I watched scenes passing that my dad had described to me. Hatshepsut, the greatest female pharaoh, put on a fake beard and ruling Egypt as a man. Rameses the Great leading, Rameses the Great leading his chariots in the battle. I saw magi magicians dueling in a palace, a man in tattered robes with a shaggy black beard and wild eyes, threw down a staff which turned into a serpent and devoured a dozen other snakes. I got a lump in my throat. Is that Musa, Zaya said, or Moshi as his own people know, knew him. You call him Moses, the only foreigner to ever to defeat the house in a magic duel. I stared at her. You're kidding, right? We would not kid about such a thing. The scene shifted again. I saw a man standing over a table of battle figurines, wooden 
toy ships, soldiers, and chariots. The man was dressed like a pharaoh, but his face oddly looked oddly familiar. He looked up and seemed to smile right at me. With a chill, I realized he had the same face as the Ba, the bird-faced spirit who challenged me on the bridge. Who is that? I asked. Nectanabo II, Zaya said, the last native Egyptian king and the last sorcerer pharaoh. He could move entire armies, create or destroy navies by moving pieces on his board, but in the end, it was not enough. We stepped over another line and the images shimmered blue. These are the Ptolemaic times, Zaya said. Alexander the Great conquered the known world, including Egypt. He set up his general Ptolemy as the new pharaoh and founded a line of Greek kings to rule over Egypt. <clears throat> the Ptolemaic section of the hall was shorter and seemed sad compared to all of the others. The temples were smaller, the kings and queens looked desperate or lazy or simply apathetic. There were no great battles, except toward the end, I saw Romans march into the city of Alexandria. I saw a woman with her dark hair and a white dress drop a snake into her blouse. Cleopatra, Zaya said, the seventh queen of the name. Oh, the seventh queen of that name. She tried to stand against the might of Rome, and she lost. When she took her life, the last line of pharaohs ended. Egypt, the great nation, faded. Our language was forgotten. The ancient rites were suppressed. And the house of life survived, but we were forced into hiding. We passed into an area of red light, and history began to look familiar. I saw Arab armies riding into Egypt. Then the Turks. Napoleon marched his army under the shadow of the pyramids. The British came and built the Suez Canal. Slowly, Cairo grew into a modern city, and the old ruins faded farther and farther under the sands of the desert. Each year, as I have said, the Hall of Ages grows longer to encompass our history up until the present. I was so dazed I didn't even realize we'd reached the end of the hall until Sadie grabbed my arm. In front of us stood a day and on, and on it an empty throne. A, a gilded wooden chair with a flail and a shepherd's crook carved in the back, the ancient symbols of the pharaoh. On the step below the throne sat the oldest man I'd ever seen. His skin was like lunch bag paper, brown, thin, and crinkled. White linen robes hung loosely off of a small frame, shakily held a, a, a leopard's skin was draped around his shoulders, and his hands shakily held a big wooden staff, which I was sure he was going to drop any minute. But weirdest of all, the glowing hieroglyphs in the air seemed to be coming from him. Multicolored symbols popped up all around him and floated away as if he were some sort of m magic bubble machine. At first, I wasn't sure he was even alive. His milky eyes stared into space. Then he focused on me and electricity coursed through my body. He wasn't just looking at me, he was scanning me, reading my entire being. Hide, something said, inside me said. I didn't know where the voice came from, but my stomach clenched. My whole body tensed as if I were bracing for a hit and the electrical feeling subsided. The old man raised an eyebrow as if I'd surprised him. He glanced behind him and said something in a language I didn't recognize. A second man stepped out of the shadows. I wanted to yelp. He was the guy who'd been with Zaya in the British Museum. The one with the cream-colored robes and the forked beard. The bearded man glared at Sadie and me. I am Des Jordans, he said with a French accent. My master, Chief Lecter Iskandar, welcomes you to the House of Life. I couldn't think of what to say to that, so of course I asked a stupid question. He's really old. Why isn't he sitting on the throne? Des Jordans' nostrils flared, but the old dude Iskandar just chuckled and said something else in that other language. The Chardons translated stiffly. The master says thank you for noticing. He is, in fact, really old. But the throne is for the pharaoh. It has been vacant since the fall of Egypt to Rome. It is... commented on? Symbolic. The chief lector's role is to serve and, pharaoh, is to serve and protect the pharaoh. Therefore, he sits at the, at the foot of the throne. I looked at Iskandar a little nervously. I wondered how many years he'd been sitting on that step. If you, if he can understand English, what language is he speaking? Des Jordan st sniffed. The chief lector understands many things, but he prefers to speak Alexandrian Greek, his birth tongue. Sadie cleared her throat. Sorry, his birth tongue? Wasn't Alexander the Great way back in the blue section thousands of years ago? Make it sound like Lord Salamander is. Lord Iskandar, Des Jordan hissed. Show respect. 
Something clicked in my mind. Back in Brooklyn, Amos had talked about e about the magician's law against summoning gods. A law made in Roman times by the chief lector, Iskandar. Surely it had to be a different guy. Maybe we were talking to Iskandar the XXVII or something. I don't know what the Roman name was. The old man looked me in the eyes. He smiled as if he knew exactly what I was thinking. He said something else in Greek and this Jordan's translated. The master says not to worry. You will not be held responsible for the past crimes of your family. At least not until we have investigated you further. Gee, thanks, I said. Do not mock our generosity, boy, just Jardins warned. You, your father broke our most important law twice. Once at Cleopatra's need, needle, when he tried to summon the gods, and your mother died assisting him. Then again at the British Museum, when your father was foolish enough to use the Rosetta Stone itself. Now your uncle, too, is missing. You know what happened to Amo? said he blurted out. This Jordan scowled. Not yet, he admitted. You have to find him, said he cried. Don't you have some sort of GPS magic or... We are searching, this Jordan said, but you cannot worry about Amos. You must stay here. You must be... trained. I got the impression he was going to say a different word, something not as nice as trained. Iskandar spoke directly to me. His tone sounded kindly. The master warns that the demon days begin tomorrow at sunset, this Jordan translated. You must be kept safe. But we have to find our dad, I said. Dinner's gods are out on the loose out there. We saw Sirket and Set. At these names, Iskandar's expression tightened. He turned and gave J this Jardins what sounded like an order. This Jardins protested. Iskandar repeated his statement. This Jardins clearly didn't like it, but he bowed to his master. Then he turned towards me. The chief lector wishes to hear your story. So I told him, with JD jumping in, with Sadie jumping in whenever I stopped to take a breath. Funny thing was, we both left our cert, our, we both left out certain things without planning to. We didn't mention Sadie's magic abilities or the encounter with the Ba, who called me a king. It was like I literally couldn't mention those things. Whenever I tried, the voice inside my head whispered, "Not that part. Be silent." When I was done, I glanced at Sa at Zaya. She said nothing, but she was studying me with a troubled expression. Iskandar traced a circle on the step with the butt of his staff. More hieroglyphs popped into the air and floated away. After several seconds, Desjardins seemed to grow impatient. He stepped forward and glared at us. You are lying. That could not have been set. He would need a powerful host to remain in the world. Very powerful. Look, you, Sadie said. I don't know what all this rubbish is about hosts, but I saw set with my own eyes. You were there at the British Museum. You must have done, too. And if Carter saw him in Phoenix, Arizona, then... She looked at me doubtfully. Then he's probably not crazy. Thanks, sis, I mumbled. But Sadie was just getting started. And as for Sir Kent, she's real too. Our friend, my cat, Bast, died protecting us. So, Deschardins said coldly, you admit to consorting with gods. Makes our investigation much, easy, much easier. Bast is not your friend. The gods caused the downfall of Egypt. It is forbidden to call on their powers. Magicians are sworn to keep the gods from interfering in the mortal in the mortal world. We must use all of our power to fight them. Best said you were paranoid, Sidi added. The magician clenched his fists, and the air tingled with the weird smell of ozone, like during a thunderstorm. The hairs on my neck stood up, stood straight up. Before anything bad could happen, Zaya stepped in front of us. Lord Desjardins, she pleaded, there was something strange. When I ensnared the scorpion goddess, she reformed almost instantly. Could not return her to the Duat, even with the seven ribbons. I could only break her hold on the host for a moment. Perhaps the rumors of other escapes... What other escapes, I asked. She glanced at me reluctantly. Other gods, many of them, released since last night from artifacts all over the world, like a chain reaction. Zaya! The Sardin snapped. That information is not for sharing. Look, I said, Lord, Sir, whatever. Bast warned us this would happen. She said Set would release more gods. Master, Zaya pleaded, if Mott is weakening, if Set is increasing chaos, perhaps that is why I could not banish Sir Ket. Ridiculous, the Sardin said. You are skilled, Zaya, but perhaps you are not skilled enough for this encounter. And as for these two, the contamination must be contained. Zaya's face reddened. She turned her attention to, it, to Iskandar. Master, please, give me a chance with them. You must, you forget your place, the Sardin snapped. These two are guilty and must be destroyed. My stone, my throat started closing up. I looked at Sadie. We had to make a run for it down that long hall. I didn't like our chances. The old man finally looked up. He smiled at Zaya with true affection. 
For a second, I wondered if she were his great-great-great-granddaughter or something. He spoke in Greek, and Zaya bowed deeply. The Sardans looked ready to explode. He swept his robes away from his feet and marched behind the throne. The chief lector will allow Zaya to test you, he growled. Meanwhile, I will seek out the truth, or the lies, in your story. You will be punished for the lies. I turned to Iskandar and copied Zaya's bow. Sadie did the same. Thank you, master, I said. The old man studied me for a long time. Again, I felt as if he were trying to burn into my soul. Not in, the ang not in an angry way, more out of concern. Then he mumbled something and I understood two words. Nectanebo and Ba. He opened his hand and a flood of glowing hieroglyphs poured out, swarming around the day. There was a blinding flash of light and when I could see again the day was empty. The two men were gone. Zaya turned towards us, her expression grim. I will show you to your quarters, the morning your testing begins. We will see what magic you know and how you know it. Wasn't sure what she meant by that, but I exchanged an uneasy look with Sadie. Sounds fun, Sadie ventured. And if we fail this test? Zaya regarded her coldly. Not the sort of test you fail, Sadie Kane. You pass, or you die. Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed um, the video. That was chapter 14. Yeah, chapter 14 of The Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan. Um, I apologize for my voice. It's kind of raspy, probably, and my hair is a mess right now. I woke up not so long ago. So, you know. Whew. Anyways, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe to my channel if you did, and peace. Don't forget to check out my other before you check out this one.